baby baby hello oh, hi yeah i'm in here i'm in here hello can you hear us <laughs> she could hear you she was trying to see you smell you it wasn't she was like where are they couldn't happen but glad to have moki here with us as a special guest on the pet cast hey i'm jeremy van suarez hey i'm jacob way hey i'm logan riley bruner hey hey oh hey hey do we have hey, any hey. do we have any house cleaning huh now no wait 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 before we get into house cleaning let's think about this guys our house cleaning was all over the place yesterday there were spots we missed whoa, whoa, whoa. there were yesterday. smudges last week <laughs> okay all right. House cleaning. What do we got? Well, the acoustic covers have officially started for season two. Oh, they yeah, are oh, yeah. on Woo! Instagram. Check out IGTV and our YouTube page. Uh, we have a whole playlist full of them. So check out acoustic covers. That's a uh, little Jacob housekeeping. Also, uh, keep your eyes peeled for my Black Wolves interview season two coming out this week. Coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, when tomorrow these... for you listeners, if you listen on the day that we drop this podcast. Yeah. What else, guys? What else? More and more episodes every day appearing on Spotify. We're hoping for... Uh... All the episodes are on Spotify. They're all, all there. All of them? Oh, my goodness. All oh, of my them. gosh. We were, Logan, we, we were talked caught about up, this. Caught up last week, brother. Yeah. Were we? I thought we were still putting things online. That's my nope. bad. We are completely oh. caught up. So why don't you, little viewer... Go and check out uh, all the podcasts that we've done, but this time in audio form. Now you could be a viewer and a listener and take us on the go on Spotify and Google Podcasts. Apple Podcasts, I'm looking at you. Actually, actually uh, Jeremy, it's your responsibility to set up that account, so I'm looking at you. All right, what's the first topic on the table, guys? Uh, well, the first thing that I see is Star Wars Visions, and we uh, can guys, talk about it, Apple but we podcast. could also... We're there? Yeah. Shut up. Who's oh responsibility? My God. Who's responsible? It's life's responsibility. It's all- I'd like to apologize all- to Jeremy Vance Suarez. All 33 episodes are Thank on you. Apple Podcasts. I felt Boom. personally attacked. <laughs> we are on Apple Podcasts, boys. We made it. Yeehaw, there we are. We're Look there. at Fun us. Fun the one in fashion, baby. Woo! I love us. Yes, we are approved. Boys. On Apple Podcast. <laughs> Woo! Listen to us on all platforms now. We're available everywhere. Give us a listen on Apple Podcasts. Check out the acoustic covers on YouTube and IGTV. And keep an eye on Jacob's interview. So that full housekeeping. Just nice. to run through the list. We can keep Star Wars visions for content we're consuming if we want. Sure. sure. I think we've all watched Star Wars Visions at least, at least one partially. episode. Yeah. yeah. So well, we we'll can talk, talk about, about it later it for, for CWCs. We'll yeah. get to that. We'll okay, to that. guys. <laughs> about this next topic. Uh, so the Nintendo Direct happened this past week, and we it got <laughs> news of new games and updates. You know, we got Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and uh, uh, Bayonetta 3 finally showed its beautiful face. Um, but the biggest announcement of that Nintendo Direct was not a video game. No, 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 no. It was the announcement of the cast for Illumination's Super Mario Bros. movie. Illumination, you may know them from Despicable Me and Secret Life of Pets and Minions. Yep, they created the Minion phenomenon. Thanks, Illumination. Um, and the cast for the Mario movie was announced. It was? <clears throat> And it's okay. It's not that it's bad. I just think that it caught people by surprise. Quite unique. It is quite unique. And honestly, okay, Mario. Go ahead, sounds like Jeremy. a joke. I don't even. I don't. I can't say it. It's, it literally sounds like a joke. Mario will be played. Oh, sorry, Mario will be voiced by Chris Pratt. Mm-hmm. That's it. Let, let's just. Pause there for a second. How do we feel about this, y'all? Uh, Interesting. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll hear it. We'll hear it. You know, I'll, I'm. I am to curious it. to see his take on the classic Italian plumber. Was Chris Pratt the first person that came to your head when you thought nope. of a Mario movie? No. No. Definitely not. Do you think Chris Pratt's gonna do like the voice? Yes. 
Like, is he just going to be like, hi, I'm Mario? Or is no, he going to be like, it's no. a me, Mario? Or is he going to be like, it's a me? Like, how how far is Chris going to go for I this think role? he's going to go full, oh, no. Well, I mean, Detective Pikachu wasn't, like, trying to sound like Pikachu. But Pikachu's never really had a voice before besides Pika Pika. And True. was that illumination? No, you are right. I'm just pointing it out. Before we continue, just want to say Chris Martinette, who is the actual voice of Mario, will also be in the movie, but not as Mario, as surprise role? Question mark? Cameo? Probably a cameo, is my yeah. guess. I feel like this movie is going to be very meta. I feel like the characters are going to know that they're in a video game. I feel like there's going to be, like, merchandise, and there's going to be... Oh, of course it's going to be You know, they're going to... I know, but within the movie, you know, they're going to, like, nod to the fact that there's Mario merchandise. So maybe the original voice of Mario will show up as Mario, and Chris Pratt will be like, doesn't even sound like me. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Well, I'm I'm a lot more excited about the rest of the cast, to be honest. Let's just just go through it. Okay. Okay, we'll go through it, and then we'll, we'll voice our opinions, okay? Anya Taylor Joy as Princess Peach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm Charlie cool. Day as Luigi. Hilarious. Jack Black as Bowser. Okay. Okay. I'm on board so far. Chris Pratt aside. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Keegan Michael Key as Toad. Out of left field, but I'm but interested. But I, th- I think it's going to be hilarious, though. Yeah. Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong. Who? Okay. Like it's like Grandpa Donkey Kong. Right. Sure. God, don't you guys know your Mario lore? <sighs> no. Unfortunately, I don't. No. Anyway, uh, Kevin Michael Richardson as Kamek, who is like the little the little wizard dude with the hat. Right. Mm. Yes. Oh um, yeah, he plays Cleveland Junior on yeah the Cleveland show. Yeah, he also is most known for Captain Gontu and Lilo and Stitch. Uh, here's a throwback: Dark Laser from Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah, do y'all rem- do, do y'all do y'all remember Dark Laser? He was Not Darth Vader, Vader but yeah, he was childhood, Darth Vader. Yeah. childhood people. Sorry, dude. Did you not watch Fairly Odd Parents when y'all were younger? I, I did. did. I... We were actually just talking about this on our way to the gym yesterday. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and finally, uh, Sebastian Seb- Sebastian mm-hmm. Maniscalco as Spike. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm. Cast announcements are weird now. It's like, okay, cool. That's the cast. I'm curious to see what happens next. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I read the tweet announcing this cast, and I was like, am I tripping right now? <laughs> am, is this, am I like, am I sober? Like am I okay? <laughs> it's just like... It's not expected. It's just... Uh, big jumble of names in a pot and you know it's, it's like it's like they're at the hollywood comedy like uh improv night and they're like okay and anya taylor joy come down you're gonna be peach and charlie day come on you're gonna play luigi and it's like yeah okay that's that's what i came for but i don't know guys i mean is is it is it's way too early to judge the movie we don't know what it's gonna sound like we don't know what it's gonna look like we don't know what the plot is i think anya taylor joy is gonna kill it as peach she kills it as everyone she is exactly i think charlie day is gonna be a great luigi yep when don't we like him exactly and i think jack black is gonna be a good bowser and seth rogan's funny Seth Rogen's going to be good. And a lot while... of it's going to depend on writing. Oh, totally. And while Keegan-Michael Key is not who I expected for Toad, honestly, it makes more sense than Chris Pratt. Yeah. Right? I feel like Chris Pratt's the big one where people are like, huh? Chris Pratt's the only one that I see people talking about online. Like, exactly. Like, question mark? And I feel the same way. You know, Chris Pratt is like, you know, like we know him as like Star Lord and like whatever his name was in Parks and Rec. Someone say it. 
We, we just know remember. him as Star Lord, okay? Okay. Let's just say we just know Chris Pratt as Star Lord and the Jurassic World guy, right? Very confident, very cool, very, very, very um, very comedic relief. Very comedic relief. Not yeah, yeah I yeah, guess he's that guy. He but does like, tend to be the funny guy. He's like the funny hot guy. Now that's not what I think now. of when I think of Mario. <laughs> yeah. He's the funny leading man. I don't know how to describe Chris Pratt, honestly. I don't. I just I don't know what this movie's going for, is the thing. Like it doesn't seem like it's going for Mario as a Mario movie. Well, that's the thing. We don't know what to expect from this movie. All this is the most information that we have. Yeah. I'm just curious if it's going to go a route of, like, being completely different than the games. Or if it's, like, is it going to be, like, Mario breaks into the real world? Are we doing, like, no, Super God, Mario no. Galaxy? Please Are don't break doing, into the like, real world. Don't let this I'm, be Sonic the Hedgehog That's the thing. Again. I think he's going to break into the real world. But not, like, with actors. More like with oh. Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I could see that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would I wouldn't say to expect too much of it to be a faithful adaptation of the video games because those video games their plot is like this much. Well, yeah. I I would say like the original video game sure, but if we're talking about like the more modern games, I feel like they have more of an idea of a, a story at least. I mean, what's what's the story? Mario Bowser kidnap people. Peach, Mario get Peach, Peach make Mario cake. Yeah. That's like that's the plot of like every single mainline Mario game. I feel like Peach is gonna have a badass scene. Oh, yeah. I wonder if Princess Daisy's gonna be in this. Probably not. If they didn't announce her in this, I doubt that she'll make an appearance. And Kristen Wiig as Daisy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I will be looking forward to the first illumination super mario bros trailer that comes out let's see um speaking of trailers yeah speaking of trailers logan what about what about them what about them bud hey i my segment is always at the end i was talking about all the trailers you sent and the lovely netflix event that happened today okay to that's what i thought <laughs> Is it to doom? Because I always, dumb. It's, it's to dumb, not that's what I thought. To dumb, right? To dumb. Like, to dumb. Sorry, my bad. To dumb. To dumb. You've been calling it to doom for like weeks, and every time I'm like, isn't it to dumb? Yeah. It's it's what just up a with the... the brain. Sure. So what up with to dumb? What is it, Logan? Tell us about uh, it. It was it was a Netflix event where they just talked about a bunch of their new projects coming out. It was pretty cool. There were a lot of trailers. Uh, uh, Stranger Things was one of the early ones. It had a new teaser. Mm. Uh, 2022 release date still. Sweet. Uh, so we don't know like what quarter. Um, we'll see. Most likely not close to the beginning of the year because Cobra Kai was announced season four for the end of 2021. So they're probably going to want to push Cobra Kai for a little bit and have Stranger Things come out a little bit later. Um, those are really the two big shows right now for Netflix are Cobra Kai and Stranger Things are the two things that people are like, and Money Heist. Um, Money Heist got its part five announced. Um, I, I have a feeling that Stranger Things is going to be a back to school 2022 release after the summer. It's going to be like autumn, new class announced and possible. everyone's yeah. feeling spooky for halloween there's like a murder house and well i mean interestingly enough all of the past stranger things have released around like holidays and that's usually like where their setting is so i'm gonna have to watch this trailer again figure out what season we're in and, and try and pinpoint when and the try and pinpoint out. what possible holiday could be uh, in addition to those, we got uh, Sex Education Season 4 officially announced. The Witcher had some new trailers. There was, it's it's everything. It's everything that Netflix is working on. They released a ton of trailers today, a ton of first looks. It's pretty remarkable, honestly, to see all the stuff that Netflix is doing. It felt, I was talking to Mike because the two of us were watching it together at the time. Um, Collective yeah. member Michael Jorge. Yes, yes. I feel like I've mentioned him so many times on the podcast that he's just kind of a staple of it at this point. I know, um, I know. It just feels so I, nice to say Yeah, sometimes. collective member. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It felt like Netflix's first kind of for, foray into like, 
can we do our own version of E3? Like they had their Geek Week, mm. which was like, let's show some nerd stuff and like see if we can do this little like kind of Comic Con virtual style thing. This feels like their E3 presentation. It was three hours. It was nice and clean. It was three hosts that just like back to back to back each hour. They had it set up of like, oh, these are the things that we're going to talk about over the course of the next hour. And they're going to have people from the show come out and explain the piece. And it was like, okay, cool. So this is Netflix is like, here are all the things we're working on in one spot. And it was, it was nice. It was really cool. I think that they should continue doing this year after year. They really seem to put a lot of effort into it. So it feels like they're, they're trying to claim, especially coming out of quarantine when they were kind of the king's of the entertainment sphere because you couldn't go to the movies. Uh, I think they're still trying to claim that crown. They're trying to be like, you can go to the movies, sure, but there's still a lot of stuff to watch at home. There's yep. a lot of content coming. So don't cancel your Netflix subscription just because you can go to AMC again. I don't think anyone's planning on canceling their Netflix subscription. Me I think either. They but just that's, that's came the home goal, with a right? lot of Emmys. Yeah. The goal is like to legitimize them as a studio, as a like, we are creators of massive content and we deserve the right to stick around and look yeah. at all the stuff that we're doing and let's take it into the future. So yeah, they've proved it. I mean, yeah. this, this uh, event only made that more official. Yeah. Solidifies some it some sure. more quick shout outs from Tadum. We got mm -hmm. the Kanye West documentary, Gene Yus. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Um, looks so, so good. I'm yeah. excited to see what that's about to get a behind the scenes look into this into Kanye's life. Um, There's as, like as outspoken as he is, he's like also very guarded about his personal life. Um, so I'm really interested to see how that goes. Part of the trailer that I saw showed like a clip of him doing like a freestyle like way back. Yeah. With uh, uh oh my god. Ah uh, what's his name? Is it like, most deaf? It is most deaf, yes. And it's just like he finishes this freestyle having gone longer than like everybody else. And like basically doing Kanye West and someone just turns and just goes, that's K West. That's K West, baby. We also got uh, the final season of Ozark. Yes. Jacob, how you feeling about final season of Ozark? Yeah, feeling good. That last season had me on the edge of my bed uh, watching. <laughs> I was like, it, it's a, I, it's a good show. I liked seasons one and three season two. I wasn't crazy about, but I'm, and that's I've where got I a good stopped feeling watching. about. I have a good feeling about season four. Cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, we also got our first look at Neil Gaiman's The Sandman. Looks uh, super Which cool. has been in, uh, it's been in like production hell for years. So many people have tried to adapt The Sandman and it's never panned it's a out. a hard project to adapt. I'm very excited for it. Um, yeah. And uh, live action Cowboy Bebop. The looks intro great. looks super cool. They recreated the intro and it, it's <laughs> looking <laughs> exciting. I think I'm going to catch up before it starts. I'm, nice. I'm just going to go in blind. I want to go in with no nice. knowledge of the original source material and just see if I like it. Cool. Also, Tiger King 2. Okay. What is there to... What? what, what? Shrug. I'm I not guess a fan there's of more footage, you know? I'm not a fan of Tiger King, to be honest. No, I saw the first episode, and I was like, both of these people suck. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Look Up looks great. Yeah. Yes. With Leo, Leo. and J-Law and uh, others. Helen? Or Meryl is it Meryl? Street. Meryl. Meryl. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we're just calling them all by their first names. We're all chill together, you know? Yeah. Someday. Someday. <laughs> Lots of trailers, and speaking of lots of trailers, I saw a bunch of cool new trailers uh, this past week for newly announced movies. Uh, first up, uh, we got Spencer, uh, which is the Princess Diana biopic, uh, starring Kristen Stewart, Timothy Spall, Jack Farthing, Sean Harris, and Sally Hawkins. Uh, lots of uh, Princess Diana stuff coming out. Oh right my yeah. god, Kristen Stewart. That As was Princess Diana. Yeah. Oh my gosh. From I didn't even the, recognize her in the picture, but wow. From the yeah. director of Jackie. So you already know we're going to get some be beautiful great. shots, beautiful characters, Ooh. beautiful costumes, beautiful acting, yeah. beautiful directing. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for it. You did. Same. Yeah. That's what uh, I definitely want to see. And it seems like I'm really interested. So the synopsis is that 
While spending the Christmas holiday with the royal family, Princess Diana decides to leave Charles. So I'm like, is this going to be a movie that just takes place in like, like a week? Yeah, like, I, I really think it looks like it's only going to take place in like a short time span. And I'm really excited to see that. That's really yeah, cool. It's the, it's the tight period of her life. Yes. And I, I, I love that. There is also Night Teeth starring Jorge Lendeborg Jr., Debbie Ryan, Lucy Fry, and Megan Fox. Um, there were there were quite a few other familiar faces that I saw in that trailer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I want to I want to leave some of it as a surprise, you know. Uh, so the synopsis is uh, Benny's entire world is turned upside down after picking up two mysterious girls who expose him to a secret world he never knew existed. He is suddenly hurled into their cryptic underworld on a mission to save a city from dripping in blood. Yes, this is a vampire movie. Oh, yeah. And it looks hella fun. Looks like a fun time. Um, I uh, honestly like I like Debbie Ryan. I know there was the whole TikTok trend to make fun of Debbie Ryan. Um, but like I... <laughs> <laughs> I think I think she looks good in this movie. She looks she like does. she's doing a good job. The movie looks fun. The movie looks like an entertaining time. I definitely this is what I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm uh, so into this. By the way, Spencer comes out November fifth, twenty twenty one. My birthday. Uh, this movie is a Scorpio, and Night Teeth comes out on October twentieth. So vampires for the Halloween season, you know. Oh yeah. Night Teeth is also a Netflix movie, and continuing with Netflix movies, we also have Passing which drops on November 10th, starring Tessa Thompson, Ruth Nega, Andre Holland, and Alexander Skarsgård. A this woman chilling. A woman is reunited with a Black friend who has been living her life as a white person. And the entire movie's in black and white. It looks Come it, on it looks direction. Intense. It looks intense. I'm ready. Yeah. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna spark some very interesting conversation. Oh, for sure. And I really, I hope it's, better than netflix's last black and white movie <laughs> yeah you weren't really a malcolm and marie fan i mean it was it was all right you know um it was i still have yet to see it so I it was it. it was beautifully acted i love john david washington and zendaya um but i don't know it wasn't 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 the best thing next up we have uh apple tv plus original film joel cohen's the tragedy of macbeth and I can say that because we're not this. currently in a theater. I want to see this so bad. Dude. Macbeth, 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 starring Denzel Washington as Macbeth. Francis McDormand as Lady Macbeth. Oh. Uh, also uh, starring Corey Hawkins, Brendan Gleeson. Um, Y'all know Macbeth. A Scottish lord becomes convinced by a trio of witches that he will become the next king of Scotland and his ambitious wife supports him in his plans of seizing power. Uh for my Queen's Gambit slash Harry Potter fans, uh, we got a glimpse of uh, Mr. Dudley Dursley uh, slash, I believe he played Harry on um, Queen's Gambit, who I think is playing uh, Macduff. Um, nice. Yes. So I'm very interested yeah. in that. Um, I... Very young Macduff versus very elder Macbeth feels very Yeah, Denzel Washington is older than Macbeth's like canon age. Yeah. Um, I also read a uh, review of the tragedy of Macbeth. Uh, will not say the number score that IGN provided to it, uh, but they had very good things to say about it. They said that it's like very haunting and also kind of like honoring stagecraft um, and kind of like very disorienting as well. Um, very, like Colin, brother. very palpable tension. Uh, and they had nothing but good things to say about it. Was it at Colin or Tribeca? Where was it reviewed? I was just curious what festival it got into. That's always American. interesting to me. New York Film Festival. New York Film Fest. Wow. Okay. Yeah, just happened. That makes sense. Uh, Dune was also shown off at New York Film Festival. Also got very good reviews. Nice. And finally, we have another Apple TV Plus film, Finch, starring Tom Hanks. This Caleb Landry Jones and Laura Martinez Cunningham. Uh, a dying man builds a robot for his beloved dog during the post-apocalypse. Looks like a looks like a family film. Looks man and a dog. Nice. Tom Hanks. Looks hopeful. Someone's gonna die. Oh, he's the the description is a dying man. He's not making it. No. Uh, but the dog and the robot will live on. Question uh, mark. Question mark. Who knows? Um, it looks nice. It looks. It looks like it's going to be sad, but like hopeful for the future. Yeah. yeah. 
What do um, we live for? Yeah. And that's uh that's all the cool new movie trailers that I saw this week. Shall right. shall I descend into what's coming next? Coming yes, soon? Logan. Hit hit us with all the movies that are coming out this uh, week. there's a lot. There's 26 movies coming out this week. One <sighs> Things. I went through all of them. I have details about quite a few of them. Uh, details about all of them is in the description down below. Uh, we want to use Black Wolves as a place to promote artists of color, uh, female artists, uh, people that haven't been represented as much in Hollywood over the years. So I like to promote those movies every week. These are the movies that are coming out between the time that you are possibly listening to this on Tuesday when we drop the official podcast and the next podcast, episode 35, which will be next week. So there are 26 films coming out in that time, and I will run you through some of them right now. First up, we have No One Gets Out Alive, which looks like Spooky. a delicious a deliciously spooky movie. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It is the directorial debut of Santiago Menchini. Uh, and one of the writers, Fernanda Copel, is a local New York playwright known for writing the plays King Liz uh, and Chimichangas and Zoloft. Uh, this looks delightfully mm. scary. Um, I have been waiting for Halloween horror season for so long, so I'm very excited for this. Um, I think this one looks really, really good. Next up, uh, Sounds Like Love is a Spanish language film by a female Spanish director, uh, Juana Mar Macias, uh, and written by Laura Sarmiento Paleras, based on the novel by Elizabeth Benevent. Uh, so, female movie, uh, female good. director, female writer, you know. Good the pronunciation whole. on all those. Those are all correct. Actually? Yes, those are, yeah, they were. Are they? Yes, as All the right. sole Hispanic in the group, yes. <laughs> right. Looks very Devil Wears Prada vibes, getting very, like, fourth wall breaky, girl works for terrible person but is trying to, like, get over her ex, looks kind of fun. That one could be cool. Uh, next up, we have Queen Pins, which is directed and written by Aaron Gaudet and Gita Pulapilly. Uh, they are a husband and wife duo. Uh, it looks really, oh, really that's funny. Cute. It does um, look good. I saw the Kristen trailer. Kristen Bell, like coupon ring with Vince Vaughn. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this. This looks actually like really, really kind of charming and kind of fun. It does. After We Fell is the third uh, film in the After series. It's a romance novel series. Oh yeah, I've heard about this. Yeah, they've been dropping like a movie a year. It's based on a series of books. It is being directed by uh, Castile Landon, uh, who's a female director. She's taking over the series from Roger Cumble, who took over the series from Jenny Gage. Uh, and it's being written by Sharon Soboyle. I always find it interesting to see that turnover in directors and seeing what new directors do for new projects. So that's always going to be interesting. But it looks like your Fifty Shades of Grey romance novel movie. Um, there's going to be a lot of sex. There's going to be a lot of sex. So just Sheesh. there's going to be a lot of sex. We have the sequel to last uh, 2018's Adam's Family movie. Uh, directors Greg Tiernan, Conrad Vernon, and Laura Brosino. Uh, being written by Dan Hernandez, Benji Samet, Ben Queen, and Susanna Fogel. Susanna Fogel, of course, wrote The Spy Who Loved Me and was the creator of the series Flight Attendant. So mm. I'm interested in that. There are a lot of cooks in this kitchen, however. It's an animated movie, uh, so it looks like it's going to be animated fun. Adam Stanley takes a road trip, looks silly. A movie that I think Jacob is going to be super excited for, uh, being directed by Alan Taylor and written by David Chase and Loris Connor. Uh, the Many Saints of Newark tells the story of the formative years of Tony Soprano, being played by uh, James Gandolfini's son, Michael Gandolfini. Uh, Jacob, do you want to talk at all about this movie? Uh, our friend Lucas saw it and he said it looked good, but I would love to hear your kind of take on what you think going into this as a Sopranos fan. I'm excited. Um, I believe in Michael Gandolfini and I think it's also Vera Famiga is playing uh, his mother so I'm I, I love her I love in her. everything we've She's talked great. about this we love her yeah She's fabulous um, I'm really looking forward to that uh, it looks like it's staying real true to the series with David Chase being on the project so I'm, I'm yeah he's he's one of the two writers so yeah. It's it's at least a story that he's very in support of. I'm I'm excited as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to like seeing the little Easter eggs and I think it's going to be a, a really good story. Me and Jacob talked about this movie, I think like maybe two weeks ago on the podcast, uh, The Guilty starring Jake Gyllenhaal. I finally saw the trailer and it looks good. Right. Mm -hmm. I um, love it, good trailer editing. Hope it's the movie is up to that standard. By Antoine Fuqua, who is a black director. 
Uh, and Ooh, what is, else has he directed? That name sounds really familiar. Look, as I continue to explain, it's based on uh, the Danish film by Gustav Moller and Emil Nygaard Albertson. Uh, so it's a remake of a Danish movie. Very excited about that. Um, it looks super good. It looks it looks like a movie that was definitely greenlit because you could shoot it during COVID. It doesn't look like there's a lot of people on that set. It looks like a lot of voiceover. Um, so I'm very I'm excited to see kind of what they do with that. That mm, world and that okay. Stuff. Antoine Fuqua, also director of uh, the upcoming Infinite, uh, The Equalizer 2. The Magnificent Seven. South Paul, uh, the first Equalizer. Olympus has fallen. Yeah, okay. Okay. Those are pretty good movies here. Those sound like really good movies right Training there. Day, classic. Denzel, classic. Oh, yeah, I forgot that he did Training Day. We have... Uh, Witch Hunt, which is uh, directed and written by Elle Callahan, who's a female director-writer. It's a witch hunting movie. It's a movie where uh, it looks like it's social commentary, but using witches. Oh, um, and in modern America. Yeah, like being born with something that you can't control that mm. makes you discriminated against. Mm. Um, so, metaphors. Um, a movie that I think looks really cool, Old Henry, starring Tim Blake Nelson. Uh, cannot wait to watch him play a gunslinger. Love gunslinger movies. There's another one coming out for Netflix uh, called The Harder They Fall, which is a black cowboy movie. So Old Henry, Harder They Fall, two new cowboy movies coming out. Concrete Cowboy came out a little while ago. That was phenomenal. I am so into these gunslinger movies. It's not even funny. Um, it's going to be great. I love Tim Blake Nelson in a cowboy role. He was yeah. immaculate as Buster Scruggs. Oh, so, that's where I know him from. Yeah. Yeah. Knew it, knew it. Justified. My man's, my man's been around the block. We have uh, Stop and Go, uh, which is directed by Stephen Meek and Mallory Everton. Uh, Mallory Everton wrote alongside Whitney Call. Whitney Call and uh, Stephen Meek are married, and the three of them are from a sketch comedy troupe called Studio C. This is a very, very COVID movie. It is a movie about COVID that takes place in COVID. Uh, all the jokes are COVID. Um, as someone who is very ready for this pandemic to end, this is not a movie that I'm looking forward to. Uh, but uh, I think always support uh, artists that are getting a chance to create content. So good for them. And uh, I wish them success, even if it's not my cup of tea. Mayday. Yes, yes. Mayday. Mayday, looked Mayday looks so, so good. weird, uh, but like weird in a good way. <laughs> directed and written by Karen Sinor. Uh, I literally have written in my notes, siren movie, question mark. It looks like... Uh, oh, my, my thought oh first, that'd be a good twist my thought when i first watched the movie was that someone went i wonder what sirens do like after they possess men to jump off boats like what's a day in the life of a siren like and just like wrote an idea based around that and it became mayday um i think there's so something cool. darker at play here oh i, I don't think, think i don't think we're gonna be dealing with sirens dark. i think we're gonna be dealing with people I, I think, think it's sirens very dark, are very pretty violent. dark. I think it's super dark and super violent, and I'm I'm very very into. into and that. it looks beautifully shot. Yes, uh, we have two films from Welcome to the Blumhouse, which is a series that Blumhouse is doing for Amazon of uh, films by uh, lesser represented directors and writers, giving them opportunities to create horror movies. Uh, this is their third and fourth movie, respectively, I believe. Uh, we've got Bingo Hell, which is directed by Gigi Saul Guerra, uh, who wrote us alongside Shane McKenzie and Perry Blackshear, Mexican director-writer. Uh, and then Black as Night, which is directed by Mariette Lee Go and written by Sherman Payne, uh, a female director making her directorial debut of a feature and a black writer. Um, so excited to see more stories being told by uh, non-white uh, male director writers uh, so looking forward to both of those we love Blumhouse creating great horror uh, of course Blumhouse known for Conjuring and Insidious and yeah. all your favorite horror genre movies uh, very excited about those Black as Night is another uh, vampire movie coming out it looks like vampires are back in this year yeah, yeah vampires I, are making their comeback that. we have uh, What Breaks the Ice which is being directed and written by Rebecca S. Creus looks like a coming of age film um it looks very different than the description that was given, so I'd say check out the trailer for what the movie's going to be about. Um, but it looks interesting. It looks like kind of a coming of age, like two girls trying to figure out what to do after an incident. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. 
Coming Home in the Dark looks really creepy. Looks like kind of a revenge story uh, directed by James Ashcroft, who wrote alongside Eli Kent, based on a short story by Owen Marshall. It looks like a guy was involved in some really bad situations and did some really bad things and has kind of moved on from that part of his life, but then gets brought back in. That part hasn't moved on from him. Yeah, very Hunter's vibes, very like, let's get the Nazis vibes. Uh, oh. Very like, I am di- I am no longer the person I was back then. So I think, I think that one looks really creepy and really cool. We have Cameron Boyce's final film, um, Runt. I which... had to do a double take when I saw that trailer. Yeah. <laughs> It looks it looks like a really really good movie. Um, honestly, even just as his last film, I was planning on seeing it, um, but just the it looks really really well done. It looks like a really kind of emotional intense like how does the kid deal with the bully? Uh, but it looks like it gets incredibly dark. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm very excited for that one. Uh, I think that looks really good. Uh, Cameron Boyce passed away far too young. Um, so yeah, I'm very. Very much looking forward to seeing that film. We have Titan, uh, which is directed by Julia Ducarneau. Jacob, you would know her as the director of the first two episodes of Servant Season 2. Okay. Um, uh, and then uh, Simonetta Greg- Greggio is a French female novelist. She collaborated on the screenplay. Um, so that's really cool. A documentary that came out a couple weeks ago that got some really incredible reviews that is now available or will be available this week on Prime. My name is Polly Murray. Uh, Polly Murray, uh, a non-binary black lawyer and activist, um, who I had no idea existed and am very surprised about. I wish that I had learned about them in school. Um, and so I definitely want to check out this documentary. I definitely recommend everybody check out this documentary. Um, we cannot move forward unless we remember the people that we came from. So, uh, especially for all our queer listeners, uh, these are the people that, uh, built the stories that we get to tell now. So, uh, yeah, let's check out that movie. We have, uh, coming from, uh, the Hamilton school, uh, we have Diana the Musical, which is a Broadway show that has been shot for Netflix. Um, curious as to why- The Hamilton show. Yeah, the the Hamilton school. The Hamilton School, yeah, they they shot the whole film, they shot the show. And Hamilton's then... not the first musical. I feel like to it's the first this. one that did it on a like major platform. Like most of the other ones are on like their Shrek own. Shrek the platform. Musical's been on Netflix for years. Oh, well, true. then the true. Shrek School. Um, they're they're filming a musical. I haven't heard a lot about this particular musical. It's the director of Come From Away and the writer of Memphis. Uh but I haven't heard anything about it and it's yeah, just same. going to Netflix. So I'm curious as to why they've been so quiet about it. So uh, yeah, those are the movies coming out this week. I'm hoping to see The Guilty and Many Saints of Newark. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to either shout those out or talk about them next week on the podcast. But that's the movies coming out this week. 26 films. There's definitely something to see. I'm drowning in all the new content. Right? It's insane. Uh, and then there's a bunch of TV shows that I'm sure came out. Uh, so there is no shortage of cinema oh uh, not at all god's not dead more like cinema's not dead anyways content we're consuming i would like to start still playing death loop um i got to show both collective member michael who we talked about earlier uh and logan uh just got to show them the game they both seem to enjoy it still um like it. Yeah, I'm right in the middle of it, still getting clues on how to get my visionaries together so I can, you know. Um, I have also started playing Death Stranding Director's Cut. Uh, I have been waiting for a reason to replay this game, and now I can replay it on very hard mode at 4K, 60 frames per second, with triggers that resist when I have a lot of cargo on my back. So it feels very fun. Last night, I saw my first Broadway show uh, post-pandemic. We're still in the pandemic, but post-pandemic. I saw Chicken and Biscuits at the Circle in the Square Theater. It is a incredible comedy. The premise is that, like, dysfunctional family um, at a funeral, period. Uh, very brief synopsis, but it's so hilarious, so expertly written and blocked and staged. 
uh, all the actors are incredible. Uh, it tells a uh, an awesome black story um, with so many references. There were so many people in the audience just like living and laughing for what was happening on stage. And it just like, it felt so good to be laughing amongst a masked audience. It felt really, really good. Please go check out Chicken and Biscuits. It's so freaking funny. And tickets start at like 50 bucks. Go do it, go do it, go do it, go do it. Um, and that's all I've been consuming. Love that. Who's next? Uh, I can go next. Unless you want to, Jacob. Jacob, you go next. Sure. I started watching Star Wars Visions, which has been ah, yeah, Star Wars so Visions. fun. I was watching that too. <laughs> uh, episode two's been getting flack online, but I enjoyed it. <gasps> It was fabulous. Yeah. All you all you Star Wars fans that don't know that you're watching anime, you're watching anime. They're going to do anime stuff. I haven't yeah. seen episode two yet. I've watched episodes one, two, three, four. four. I might have seen five last night then. Nice. It's good stuff so far. Looking forward to watching the rest. Very good. Um, by these studios. Think. Other stuff that I'm consuming. I have to say listeners you've got to check out fire shut up in my bones at the metropolitan opera which just premiered last night Woo! uh if you're I'll a live watching listener it. i'll be watching it on yes night. yes yes that's right myself logan and jeremy will all be there opening night and and we can definitely talk about that next podcast we absolutely oh, yeah. will. i think we absolutely will the start and... of the metropolitan opera season i'm very excited it's gonna be a good one. Um, that's all I. That's all I have to say. Nice. Yes, Logan. Um, I'm still playing a lot of the same things that I was playing before: Apex, Dead by Daylight, Far Cry New Dawn. You know the norms. Um, I'm still watching Ted Lasso, which I think is fabulous. We will have watched uh, the Russian Grand Prix uh, and Fire Shut Up in My Bones by the time that this podcast premieres. Uh, so very excited for both of those. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything that I didn't get to shout out on the last podcast that I've like watched since then. And I can't really think of anything new. I'm still watching Hunter x Hunter. I'm still watching Sex Education, which is really good. Uh, still watching that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Still watching Jujutsu Kaisen, which is really great. Um, I'm You're kind caught of, up I'm on the... Formula One. Yes, Drive just finished survive. Formula One Drive to Survive. Uh, my one comment uh is netflix you did a great job with this season uh it feels like the black lives matter stuff was tacked on to the last five minutes of the last episode and i don't appreciate that uh so let's maybe give lewis hamilton the seven-time world champion a little bit more time to talk about uh the things that are really important to him instead of just shoving that all to the end of the season uh because you didn't know where else to put it um, other than that, I thought they did a great job telling the stories these past three seasons. I'm very excited for season four. Uh, I can already see the Netflix crews running around with the racers every time we watch the race. So I'm like, that's going to be a shot. 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 Uh, so yeah, I believe that is all the stuff that I'm consuming um, at this point. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching the Black Wolves podcast. Remember, you can watch, watch us anytime. Listening. We got to thank them for listening well, now. Well, I was going to get to that. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> thank you for uh, watching the Black Bulls podcast. Uh, as always, you can watch us on YouTube at any time. And like we said in the beginning, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Woo, uh, woo. Subscribe, like, comment, interact with us. We would love to interact with you. Please give us notifications to go through. <laughs> give us notifications to miss. I mean, I want to have so many that I can't get to them all. I want to be overwhelmed with comments from you. Please. So comment down there. Go do it, do it, do it. Unless you're listening, then you then you can't comment. Then so go to our Instagram. Go to our Instagram, go to our YouTube, comment on comment, comment, comment. On the podcast. Uh yeah. Uh, that's all from us this week. I am Jeremy Van Suarez. I'm Jacob Wade. I'm Logan Riley Burner. And as always, hasta la vista, baby. Bye-bye.